Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. What a predictive novel this is. Yes, I skipped doing my homework in high school because I was chasing butts and I did not read the book. But now that I'm older, I have a butt. I don't chase butts. I can read Ray Bradbury. And so I read it in Fahrenheit 451 and it is amazingly predictive. It has so many elements about today's reality that we now see back in 1953. So this is a classic example of predictive program that we want to cover that I haven't covered to date. So the lead character, the, the protagonist is Guy Montag and Guy is a normie. He's married to a pill addicted, awful woman who is extremely shallow and basically stands in the way of his character development. She is the, in many ways, she's the chief antagonist, even though there's a guy who Guy works for, who's his boss, who you think is the bad guy. But in reality, it's his wife that stands in the way. So a couple things that stood out was that in this future, everybody is entranced by sports ball. That's all they do is worship sports ball. They, walk, they have wall-sized TVs. Every room has a giant wall-sized TV. <clears throat> and one thing that's mentioned is the, uh, the, the lack of attention spans. Nobody reads anymore. And that's, of course, the, the central thesis of the book is that all books need to be burned. And it's, it's titled Fahrenheit 451 because that's the temperature at which the books burn. <clears throat> so Guy's job is actually a firefighter. But as a firefighter, it's not what you think. The firemen have the duty when there's a call to actually go and burn up the books. So in this dystopian future, you have no <clears throat> educated populace. The only people who are educated are people who are kind of hiding out on the outskirts and they sneak books around. So books are actually contraband, they're black market items. <clears throat> um, the Bible, interestingly, is a black market item. And so in many ways, although I wouldn't say that this is a Christian dystopian story, it does have the positive attitude towards religion that we do see in a lot of Western propaganda. So it might have functioned more like a anti-Soviet style propaganda uh, story, as if the future that we're going into is going to be run by the Soviet Union or something like that, and not by a corporate tech elite, which is where we are now. So people hide in the past. They sneak Bibles around, they sneak Shakespeare around, they sneak literature around, and this eventually catches the interest of Guy. Guy means a teenage girl who's very into reading books and literature and philosophy, and so he starts reading books and literature secretly out of curiosity. He eventually gets reported by his wife. His wife tattles on him because she is a pill-addicted loon who, by the way, actually tries to commit suicide. She takes so many sleeping pills that she thinks it will end her life and she fails in this endeavor. <clears throat> and the guy makes the mistake of thinking that he can actually reform her and change her mind. Guy thinks if I can just get the word out, if I can show people how cool poetry is, how neat it is to read science fiction novels or whatever, but none of this works because of course the reality is that most of the population, much like Plato's allegory of the cave, don't actually want to see the light, unfortunately. There's a lot of weird things like DARPA dogs, mechanical hounds that go out and chase people down. And if you are too rebellious in your book learning, if you insist on reading books, then you actually get burnt. So there is the death penalty here. Civilization is basically on the verge of collapse. Um, stage news is a big part of this. There are staged ex executions on the news. This keeps everybody in line. Um, we have <clears throat> a lot of interesting symbolism with the Phoenix. The Phoenix is a big part of this because out of the ashes of the collapsed civilization will emerge the new civilization. This is the civilization that will succeed this civilization that's gone through its cycle. So what Ray Bradbury is trying to tell us is that in this kind of illuminist view, pause, so, like I said, man, Fahrenheit 420, man. That's what it ought to be. The government should subsidize a government cheese payroll set aside so everybody gets their own recliner, man. Because that's the only way we can fight the system is a recliner where we can read. Everybody should be reading books, man. But in the future, books are outlawed. You can't have books. 
Civilization is on the verge of collapse, and the phoenix symbolizes the cycles of civilizational collapse and rebirth. That's in fact how the book ends. But before I get to that, I just wanted to point out that Kindle, as Richard Grove has eloquently stated, Kindle is the birth of death of books. You kindle a fire, and Kindle is the burning of books. Everything in the future is censored by the firemen, just like Winston in 1984. You are told not to think and you're told not to read. Books are banned. Books are basically viewed as what they called hypocrisy. They said that no book could report truth, and so books are therefore lies. People don't know. It's like idiocracy, basically. They don't know that there's dew on the grass. They don't know why there's dew on the grass. Literally out of idiocracy. The books, the, it's not just fiction, by the way. All books are, are banned, but fiction is especially hated because fiction tells stories. 451 is also, as I said, a symbol of the normie who wakes up. Now, one of the ironies of this uh, book, oh, by the way, there's jet bombers and surveillance. Everything is surveilled. They know everything that you do, everything that you say, everything that you read. There's not, it, it, it's not social media, but it's almost like social media. So in fact, this book actually has been called the predictor of social media. Now, as I said, his wife is on antidepressants. She's also an actress. She's like a reality TV actress, ironically. She takes pills, there's wall-to-wall -wall TVs, and you're not allowed to converse with people uh, about anything beyond what is on mainstream TV because people can report you. You can be told, tattled on. What other notes did I have? Uh, all the history is fake. Um, there is essentially a return of the Inquisition. So ironically, what you see with like social justice now is essentially telling you what's coming 451 style because they're quite literally probably gonna have people who go around with flamethrowers and burn the Bibles and the books. I think that's actually coming in the future. So long story short is that it's accurately called the predictor of social media. Um, Eventually, of course, he ends up having to defy his overlords. He ends up burning his boss. Spoiler alert. Um, oh, by the way, they watch the comedy box, is what they call it, the TV. It's called the comedy box. Uh, it's called The Bunch. <laughs> That's their comedy show. Do you watch The Bunch? Um, everything is politically correct, too, by the way. Uh, Everything is totally controlled, dumbed down. Low IQ is the norm. The pop music is said to be all meaningless. They all spend their time doing quizzes. This is another interesting fact. Everybody does meaningless pop quizzes. That's their, how they pass their time. <clears throat> there is a behaviorist uh, component to this. Morality is uh, liberal or excuse me, is, is relative. Uh, you're, you only do what you're told by the TV to do. So in many ways, it's the elements in a lot of the other dystopias that are, that are missing are present in this one, particularly the prediction of social media. And so it seems to predict, by the way, a breakaway civilization. So it turns out that there is a revolutionary group who lives outside of society and they are the professors and the educated elite. Um, but in the city, they force everyone to be equal. So you're, you're bad if you have education because you're not equal to everyone else. So it's a kind of radical, uh, egalitarian, equalitarian, fake civilization. And the hobo camps, the hobos are all PhDs. Everybody in the hobo camps are the PhDs and the professors because those are banned in the future. So there you go, it's a breakaway civilization, a model of total top-down control by tattletale technocrats, technocrotch, and if you don't follow what they say, you get burnt. So that's where we're going. And I just 
can't believe that that's the society that we're entering into. We are entering into the Fahrenheit 451 society. Don't forget, yes, we all know about Brave New World, we all know about 1984, but do we also remember Fahrenheit 451, the uneducated book banned future dystopia? In fact, they're talking about banning books now. There are lists of books that are part of classics that social justice is attempting to ban. So much for liberal freedoms, right? This shows that your classical liberal freedoms actually evolve and morph into their opposite and they ban everything that's not, quote, liberal. Because what is liberal? Well, it ends up being the leveling of all things. Everything has to be equalified and become monotone. Everything becomes gray. So uh, let's keep our books, read books, and don't watch the wall TV screens. I forgot to mention too, you're also supposed to be childless in this future. This is a childless corporate future where the lead people have multiple abrasions and in this childless future, it's a heavily controlled population. It's a depopulated utopia. In fact, they even discussed this in the novel itself. It's interesting that Ray Bradbury would include all of that. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you like Jay's analysis, be sure and subscribe to Jay's analysis here on YouTube in the join button, or you can go to jaysanalysis.com and subscribe at the PayPal links. You can also get my books, Esoteric Hollywood 1 and 2, and be sure to order your government subsidized gray recliner because they're for reading books, and in the future, books will be banned, and you need to take advantage of your 401k government recliner boomer issued right now because through the Obama Housing Act, these government issued recliners are actually paid for and they are great for reading predictive science fiction like Ray Bradbury's illuminous novel Fahrenheit 451, which predicts the rise of the breakaway civilization out of the ashes of the collapsed old order.